In the last video, we looked at a simple classification of matter often used in first year chemistry courses, whereby we broke matter into two broad categories, substances and mixtures. Um, in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the mixture side in a little more detail, and we're gonna look at three categories of mixtures, solutions, colloids, and suspensions. All of these are particular types of mixtures where typically we have solid particles um, dispersed somehow in a liquid medium, and we're going to look at each of them in turn. The first one is a solution. So uh, in our, one of the previous videos, we looked at this idea of a drink mix um, that you go to the grocery store, you get the powdered drink mix off the shelf, you go home, you mix it in with a bunch of sugar and some water, stir it together, and you get this kind of uniform uh, mixture where you can no longer tell the difference of the parts that you put in there. That's why we consider this homogeneous, and that process is um, um, dissolving. Uh, and so when these particles dissolve, they become so small that you know, even under a microscope, you cannot see the individual um, sugar or um, drink mix particles that get dispersed um, into that liquid. So solutions, by definition, are homogeneous mixtures. Um, our next bit we want to look at is colloids. So colloids have slightly larger particles that technically do not dissolve, but they're too small for gravity to settle them out of the liquid mixture. So we could think about milk. Um, milk has two basic parts to it. You have a water-based part and you have a fat, uh, you have a milk fat based part. And in a typical glass of milk, the milk fat particles are somewhere between 0.2 and 2 micrometers. Um, a micrometer is about a millionth of a meter, so we're talking about a pretty small particle size here. Um, those fat particles, though, are not big enough to settle out, so they just disperse throughout the liquid. And the process of breaking those fat particles into small enough pieces is called um, homogenization, or you have homogenized milk, because the milk looks uniform. Colloids, where they land on the heterogeneous homogeneous phase, though, um, is a bit up for discussion. We'll come back to that. But again, if you think about this in terms of the fat particles dispersed, um, this homogenization actually breaks down when milk sours. And anyone who's seen a, a, a carton of sour milk, particularly if it's gone way bad, um, the homogenization breaks down, the fat particles tend to clump together, and then they all settle to the bottom and you get this kind of chunky milk. Um, and that at that point you no longer have a colloid, which leads us to our next type of mixture called a suspension. Uh, suspension is a heterogeneous mixture of uh, particles that settle into layers over time. So that layers ought to be cluing you in um, to that idea of heterogeneous. Suspension particles are big enough to be seen by the naked eye. And if you want a good example of a suspension, um, you can think about uh, light shining through a window in the early morning. And when you look at that, you can see all of these dust particles dancing around in the air. Um, and so uh, when you look at that, we know that those settle out over time because they settle out on the furniture and the furniture has to be dusted. So uh, that's a good example of a heterogeneous mixture. Fun fact, of course, the particles dancing around in the air there are overwhelmingly and by and large a whole bunch of dead skin cells that have been sloughed off by the people that live in your house and dust mites that eat the dead skin cells. Um, so that is what's kind of floating around in the air. And if you think about the density of those dust particles, um, when you look at that beam of light, you have to imagine how much of that you're taking in. <gasps> every time you take a good deep breath. So I hope that didn't keep you up at night. Um, a slightly less gross version of the suspension, of course, is the snow globe, right? We shake the snow globe up. The particles in the snow globe are designed to be small enough that they settle out slowly and look at and look like snow falling in the night sky. Of course, snow itself um, would technically be considered a suspension. Um, earlier in the video, I said that these were all um, solid particles dispersed in the liquid medium. It would have been more accurate for me to say a fluid medium um, because we've talked now about two examples of suspensions of particles in air. Um, so we can actually have a gas be uh, the medium through which the particles are dispersed in. How do we then tell the difference between solutions, colloids, and suspensions? 
Um, to, typically what we're going to do is use a thing called the Tyndall effect. The Tyndall effect is the scattering of light off of the particles dispersed in your medium. And so when we think about a solution, the particles are submicroscopic and they're so small they don't reflect light. So if I shine a beam of light through a solution, um, I'm going to get, uh, I'm not going to be able to see the beam. I'll be able to see the light go into the glass, come out of the glass, um, but you're not going to actually see the path of the beam in the glass. Um, when you have a colloid, however, the suspension particles there are big enough that they're going to scatter light and you're going to be able to see that beam of light go through the glass. Now, you're probably going to have to have yourself um, skim milk here uh, rather than whole milk because it'll be too dense and you may or may not be able to see. You probably see the path of light go in a little bit. Um, but colloids, you can actually see the path of light because the particles are big enough to scatter the light beam. In suspensions, you're actually going to see the light beam dance off of all of those suspension particles. So we have as an example here, flour in water. Flour doesn't dissolve in water. Um, and so if you put flour in water, um, you'll be able to see the individual little flour particles floating around and kind of settling out. And the light will dance off of those and you're going to have yourself like a disco dance show going on with that situation. So um, suspensions, uh, solutions, colloids, suspensions. Uh, really what we're talking about here is the separation of types of mixtures, solids dispersed in fluid mediums by particle size. Solutions are submicroscopic uh, sub particles. They're homogeneous by definition. Suspensions on the other end are visible particles that settle out into layers. They're heterogeneous by definition. Colloids are just floating somewhere in the middle there. And whether or not they're heterogeneous or homogeneous depends on point of view, right? If we're looking with the naked eye, things are going to look uniform. If we look with a microscope, they're going to look like they have different layers. And so um, you have to define the conditions under which you're deciding whether or not a colloid is homogeneous or heterogeneous. Um, and not just that, but there's no distinct point of transition from solution to colloid. This um, is a gradation of a scale. And so you can have large macromolecules that will dissolve um, in a solution and, um, that maybe you could actually see with a microscope, um, but you might still consider those homogeneous. Um, you have colloid particles that settle out extremely slowly. So over a long period of time, they might not look like they're settling out, but if you wait um, a, an exceedingly long amount of time, they might, um, they might settle out after that. So you may not think it's a suspension initially, but if you wait long enough, then it presents itself as a suspension. So you have this, uh, again, this grade of solution to suspension, and there's no fixed point where it turns from one to another. Okay, so let's take a look at our classification of matter with something pretty simple. Here we have a glass of water, and so the question is, where does this land in our classification of matter? Well, it depends. If you're talking about pure water, H2O, well then clearly you have a substance because you have a chemical formula for it. It's not an element because there's both hydrogen and oxygen, so we're going to refer to that as a compound. That said, no glass of water is pure water. All water has stuff mixed into it. Water is um, a fairly effective solvent. So if you think about in Kansas, the water that we drink um, has a lot well, it's referred to as hard water because it has a lot of mineral content dissolved in it, primarily because we have a lot of limestone bedrock, so calcium carbonate. There are salts dissolved in water. Um, there are other bits of things floating about in there, and so it would be more accurate if we were talking about a glass of water out of the tap or through your refrigerator spout or out of a uh, plastic bottle. Um, it would be a mixture and that mixture looks pretty continuous, so we would probably refer to that as a homogeneous mixture. And in particular, all of those ions dissolved in there make up what we would call a solution. 